Hey guys, my name is Simsy. How are you all doing? Welcome back to some more Medieval Kingdoms Total War 1212 AD campaign. We're back on the Kingdom of Jerusalem and Cyprus Let's Play. This is episode 5. In today's episode, we're going to continue to protect the Holy Land and purge the infidels. Here today, we're going to be pushing north and declaring war upon the Seljuk Sultanate of Rum. And I've seen an interesting opportunity here. We can intercept the Zengid uh, dynasty here. They're just outside Aleppo. They've actually hit this um, principality of Antioch army. So we're probably going to intercept that before we push north against the Seljuk. So if you like the sound of that and want to support more episodes for the series, the best thing you guys can do is to leave a like, subscribe if you're new around here with notifications on, and let me know in the comments, feedback and suggestions for the series thus far. Got to say a huge thank you to the 1212 AD mod team for making this Let's Play possible. Okay, so welcome back to the series, guys. In the last episode, if you haven't gone and watched it, I highly recommend you do. We managed to take Cairo, Alexandria, and the port city here. Looking at our diplomacy, we have a lot of military allies now. Bologna, uh, Trebizond, the Latin Empire, Genoa, Pisa. We are currently still at war with the Ayyubid Sultanate. Daud, I think I'd say his, his name. Uh, the Ayyubids have fled from their Egyptian holdings to the south of Arabia here. We are at war with some pretenders in the east, along with Mecca as well. But we've been able to develop the Holy Land quite significantly, bringing in Catholic abbeys in some of the major cities, Cairo, Alexandria. We're still dealing with some small amounts of public order problems, but we're coming fine with that. We've also managed to recruit six total armies in doing so. We also managed to seize roads here from rebels. Um, but that's pretty much it. Looking at the world at the moment, uh, let's have a look at our diplomatic status. We've got this really nice sort of alliance buffer over here. Even the Republic of Pisa has taken some territory in Egypt. Uh, Venice has come here massively as well. So the plan was after to finish off the Ayyubids. Uh, we haven't officially finished them off, but I'm not too fussed. If they want to run down and hide in southern Arabia and flee with the last of their family members, the Sultan's family, it doesn't bother me. Logistically, there's no reason for me to push that far south and even trying to govern and occupy it, so I'm not going to waste the men, lives, and finances to do so. So, after we've secured the Kingdom of Heaven, I wanted to go against the... Um, the, uh, the Sultanate of Rum. Now, unfortunately, the Turks are very much on the back foot and they've only got one territory left, so we're going to be able to mop them up quite easily. However, over in the Far East, we've still got the Caliphate, Zengid, and like Baghdad to deal with. So maybe securing this for Christendom might be a good idea. Helping out Antioch directly is a good idea. So we'll go off to Rum. Unfortunately, it wasn't going to be as big a big as a big war against the Turks as I sort of envisioned, but uh, no matter. Right. So we currently have an army here. We've currently got some Crusader Northmen as well. Two units of dismounted Hospitallers, Templar Knights. We've got some catapults here we've seized from rebels and archers. So we've got a pretty nice army here. Secondary, we have Simon. Now, looking at my family tree, we've actually had some children. Hugh has four children, a daughter, Bert, a, another daughter, Agathy. Jean is our son and heir, and Gil is currently my four-year-old son. Unfortunately, my... My brother-in-law, Jean, has, has died, uh, even though Jocelyn is a son, so he's technically my biological nephew. Um, that's good. We've got another male heir in the throne. Um, unfortunately, yeah, Jean died. He died at 57. Hugh is currently 34. So my bastard sister has remarried. And can I actually move this up a bit? Yeah, good. There's some. There have been some free and opened up political positions. So let's try and get everyone up here. Oh, Godfrey here doesn't look very loyal, loyal, so let's secure his loyalty. So we've got two full stacks here. We'll probably push against Zengid and 
attack them in the open field. Uh, let, um, the Principality of Antioch are already at war with them. So that will be the battle of today's episode. We do have a small rebellion in Cyprus. We've got an army here with Godfrey we can easily go and deal with. The rebels have changed in Cyprus. They are more strong and sort of fiery and vengeful because the Byzantine Empire has fallen officially to Latin Empire and notably Venetian Crusaders, if you will, in Anatolia. It's interesting to see how that city's developed. Okay, so we've gotten rid of the rebels here now. The army can stay near Cyprus uh, for now. Okay, pushing further in the south with our other three armies. We've got Richard here with a full stack protecting our territory from Mecca and Ayyubid territory. Ayyubid um, forces through here. We currently have a full stack being recruited in Alexandria. Godfrey here as well. It does look like some Ayyubid pretenders that were left are going to be hanging out here. Okay. Um, I want to actually... We're getting Alexandria back on track. It's 80% Christian now. Now, I did mention the main objectives for this series was to pretty much eliminate the Ayyubids. I'd say we've basically done that. Tick. I wanted to go against the Sultanate of Rum, which we're going to be able to do today as well. But I wanted to suss out what was going on in Spain. Um, I'm interested to see how our Catholic brethren in Portugal or Spain are doing against the uh, Moors, because that's really the only sort of other sort of Islamic invasion going on. So we'll go over and deal with that now. So not really much else we can do here. We'll continue my priests to be deployed. And I think now, uh, like I said, I was planning on hitting the Seljuk Sultanate. However, the... Principality of Antioch more than likely need me further in the south. So, we'll go and negotiate with Antioch here now. I will join your war against the Zengid dynasty. Can I get a payment from you, perhaps? Just to sweeten the deal. Wet our coffers. And they've accepted. 800 gold to carve up some Ayubids. Get our boys into the field. Why not? So, let's move Simon now down here, who is currently my new son-in-law. Hopefully, he has some children with my bastard sister. Right, so we're going to be able to push down here with King Hugh and push against them in Aleppo. So, oh, they've pulled back oh, all the way to the city there. I wonder if that's going to be brought in as a, as a garrison. Regardless, we're going to be able to push the Ayubids here to, what is this territory? It's a Syria. We could even very well continue down to like Mosul. Uh, maybe even Baghdad, if that's something you would like to see. Further expanding Christian influence in the Middle East. Let me know in the comments. But regardless, for now, we're going to have to deal with this force. Okay, so we are coming up against Mo, Muhammad. He currently has two units of Jazari spears, two units of infantry, uh, the medium type. Then he's got some lighter ones here. Two units of Ghulam archers, Ghazi as well, or skirmishers. Oh, they've got some um, Skari heavy cavalry. They've also got a catapult unit and, of course, some horse archers. Okay. Um, we have, of course, just looking at the order resolve, 5,381 to their 2,650. We have cavalry supremacy already looking at this. We also have archer supremacy, 6 to 4. Skirmishes were nearly on par. And they do have more swordsmen by the look of it. Yeah, we've only got 4 units of swordsmen, but we make up with that with Crusader Northmen. Axemen. So let's fight this one on the battlefield here today. Once we've thrown out the Caliphate's forces threatening Christian Aleppo, we'll double back, deal with the Seljuk Sultanate of Rum, and officially get rid of the uh, the Turks. The scourge of Christianity. <laughs> We're going to be purging them with fire and steel, fittingly enough. Okay guys, welcome to the battle map. The weather conditions are on our side, we don't have to roll the dice, so let's start the deployment. Already looking at the terrain, they've probably got a slight advantage, seeing so we're going to have to push uphill against them. I'm going to fall further back, 
just make a nice strong long front line and we'll wait for our reinforcements to come up before we even need to push against them we're better off being united than obviously divided okay so we'll continue on heavy shot I'm more than happy with that and I think we'll go with explosive round for now but let's have a look at some of these units some of these units we haven't haven't seen in the campaign before but here are our, are our heavily battle hardened uh, mounted crusaders here they fought countless years against the Iubids, but now we have some of the northern Christian Axemen. They are newly added to the army, with the swells of Scandinavians coming in, <laughs> keen to hack people to pieces. Heavier archers here as well, catapults further at the back. I think it's the first time we've had dismounted hospitalars and more Templar Knights in our ranks. Yeah, so this will be the first time we have some Hospitalars in the field. Um, further cavalry here, and then of course we have the man, the myth, the legend, humongous, the uh, uniting king of uh, the Christian Middle East, bringing Christendom under one rule. Well, in the East, that is. Okay, so... We're slowly but surely now waiting for my new brother-in-law, Simon, Simon, depending if he's French or fucking Simon, if he's from England. <laughs> he's coming in here now. And the infidels, I'm not entirely sure what they're doing. They just seem to be holding a nice, long and strong front line. Heavy cavalry there we need to be wary of. Their Haskar. Oh god, these guys look absolutely terrifying. Immortals on the ridge. They look fantastic. And uh, further in the front line there, they have their own catapults. Pushing uphill might uh, be a little bit different. Uh, difficult. But that's alright. Alright, so what I want to do, let's reform this army up. I don't want to waste time. So, I think getting all our axemen, all our spearmen, and swordsmen, uh, it's probably a good idea to, like, push. Maybe flanking with spearmen isn't too much of a bad idea, but also, like, plugging the holes in the front line might be good. You know what I mean? Like, getting these spearmen, like, it'd be better to put axemen that can actually hand-to-hand -hand combat break down the center, or we better off with our net numerical supremacy, get our spearmen to plug these gaps while our axemen flank and just absolutely <laughs> tear every poor living soul apart. Um, we've got a decision to make. And I don't know just yet. So we'll get all our archers formed up. And we might even be able to have a pretty decent skirmish on our hands. But uh, regardless, what I'm going to do with my axemen around the flanks or swordsmen, because swordsmen can properly hold and fight, we'll see. So we'll go like uh, here, say. So we'll make a strong, long front line here for now. So that should really mirror their front line. So I think with everyone else, we go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So there's nine. So we really can go like four apiece and then five on one. So let's put you here. You're going to be the main flanking unit there. Uh, so yeah, we'll go like there. And then you guys can go that away. I think even some of those guys can flank a bit better. So we'll put my archers here as well. And we'll probably get everyone to move up. We'll divide our cavalry into proper divisions as well. Gold Chevron Cavalry now. We've been fortunate enough with the political unrest in the Holy Land, just with how m how many rebellions we've had. So it's really allowed most of our men to become quite battle-hardened, and a lot of our uh, forces have fought countless fights. So they've gotten pretty easy chevrons. It's not usually too about the quality of troops, it's just about the number of fights you've had. So we've got King Hugh now pushing up, hovering up ground. I'm curious to see how the AI perform in this. We do outnumber them quite significantly, even though they do probably have the terrain on us. 
We should be able to win here quite comfortably if my tactics come out. Um, so, four archers to our six. Catapults on either side. Uh, are we better to try and skirmish them out a bit? That's what I'm sort of thinking. Have they, are their catapults already in range? Maybe, maybe not. Let's try and allow ours to get in range regardless. But we'll move up to our position. If their shot's over the top, I'll know. So let's allow everyone to move up. Control A and move. So, can I actually have a look at the Axeman stats while everyone's moving about? They're reforming their front line. So 35 to... F ah, really? Do the mediums... Medium shock infantry. Melee defense. Wow, they've got a bit of melee attack. Really? Huh. I wouldn't have thought that. Huh. Oh, maybe they're not even that worth it then. Hang on, I need to read those stats. So, melee attack... Melee defense low. These guys have got good melee defense. Melee defense, melee damage. Oh, melee damage is high though. That's yeah, that's it. Damage. Hmm. They're all right. I thought looking at them, when you give someone the claim of Crusader Northman, <laughs> you'd think they'd be a lot more menacing. So they seem to be re removing their front line. Still waiting for our guys to get further into position. Okay, what are they doing? They're just making it a little bit lopsided. How far away until our catapults are actually in range? Quite some time. Right, let's re-give the order and move them up again. Okay, let's move everyone up. Let's allow my cavalry to at least to get here. Get some better quality high ground. And you can swing this way. Alright, move up lads. We're probably going to have a fight here. We're going to be in such close proximity to them. They already seem to be moving out there. Heavy bowmen. We're going to have to be careful of them. Because if they pick apart, get a unit exposed, especially from the rear, we're going to have some troubles. But if we can sort of capture... At least one cavalry unit. We probably should be alright. Okay, what do they seem to be doing? They seem to be reforming their line again and pushing even further back. Swinging these guys like this way might be more beneficial. Yeah, they seem to be reforming and clustering up. They can't seem to make their own decision. Everyone's moving quick fast. You need to be up here, my friend. Okay. Uh, you need to be, like, further here. We're really sort of pushing them towards the back of the uh, of the map. We are pushing up here, so some, some of my guys are already a little bit tired. Let's speed things up. Once we get to this position, we're going to be able to get some archer fire over the top and their catapults are already in range of mine of my line look I'm, I'm getting sick of this they're sort of sitting back here let's just go for the charge let's just go for it now and then we'll flank with the rest right go All right, flank please Blank. Right, allow my archers to be on skirmish, but move up. Yeah, my catapults just can't get there. All right, push for it, lads. Once you get into close proximity, pick a target and go. You really should nearly pin this unit down from behind here, and you come around like this. Alright, pick that unit, go. Pick that. Yeah, they just seem to be pushing so far back. I don't really know what their their plan necessarily is. 
Because they're not standing and fighting. Yeah, push. Come on, grab them. Because they're, they're sitting flat-footed. And they're just going to get wiped from the side. Alright, that's been officially smashed. It's like exposed cavalry, this exposed archers here, which is just insane to me that they've allowed that. What is this ineptitude? We've had so many more professional battles than this shit. Come on. Why are they? Oh, because they're heavy cavalry coming into that. Shit. I'm surprised how well they did. Oh, maybe they're trying to bait me in there. Okay, let's try and fix things up a bit. After we just had two units basically shatter then from a, an Ascari cavalry charge. I'm really impressed about that. Okay. Well, what I can do is try and get some of these heavier ones here. So you can go for this. You can go for that. Yeah, come down and help this then. Wow, I'm really surprised about that actually. So I can't leave too many to go like this. Uh, maybe try and get some early shots off on here. Get you guys to move further up as well. Because we've even got our boys here that need to be... Probably send a couple through the center. And send the rest around the back there. Yeah, because I don't want to get some of my cavalry caught. If I don't need to. But they do seem to be, yeah, they do seem to be exposing their, their units so much that's, that it, like, it's, it's tempting to run after their skirmishes. Yeah, because they're intertwining that, but they're being quite aggressive there. I push for something like that. Come closer up here and around. Ah, oh, they've got me there. Actually, if everyone focuses this, we'll be safe. Yeah, yeah, like, try and pin the... Yeah, 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 yeah. Like, that's what we need to be doing. Wow, they are really buckling some of them. Which I am surprised about. Alright, you need to be turned off there. That's alright, you can fall further back this way. I'm surprised the cavalry isn't, like... Head on, chasing them down. Good. Right, let's try and surround guys where we can. Right, get here. God, it's just, this is such a manic battlefield. Like, it's such an unorthodox approach that it's actually somewhat working against the weaker spears. Like, I don't, I can't, like, figure out what they're doing. They're just sort of just, like... I guess that it's really reactionary, I don't know. Oh, that's alright, we caught them there. They don't seem to have, like, a clear doctrine or ideology. Like, they're just running around like madmen. And it seems to be working. Alright, there we go. Now we're getting some cohesion here. Those horsemen that charged there has worked out well. By bloody hell, they nearly got my archers there. Right. Envelop where you can. Good. Make sure cavalry focus on is focusing on like this sort of shit. Yeah. All right. Continue to push up and help. Yeah. Now we're getting some routing. Crikey! How many men do we lose there? Six hundred. Okay. It's not too bad when you when we're gonna look at it in retrospect. But man, oh man. So they're fighting us quite well in the center here. I'm going to have to t let my archers to turn off fire at will because they're hitting some of my own men. Look at the colourful sort of clothing of the Abbasids. Oh, wow. And this guy looks like a heavy sort of Danish lad there. He's getting in, hacking and slashing. Okay. 
get my archers to halt, disable fire at will. Okay. So how are we going against the likes of their general? That's what we really need to be smashing. Some units are holding out here. Some of my cavalry is actually in hand-to-hand -hand combat with their heavy bowmen. You forget that they're heavy sometimes. That's why they're doing so much damage. Alright, you push around the back there. They're now routing. It's probably not a bad idea for some of my archers to get some target practice off the close ones. But that's it. She's all over Red Rover. The full time whistle has blown. <laughs> the ref is called uh, time to play, I guess. Oh, wow. Okay, so we've got them here now. I just turned my archers. I just gave them some orders. Phew! We got them. Ladies and gentlemen, we got them. Deus Bolt. Right. Let's try and run down as many of them as possible. Man, that was such a crazy micromanaged sort of a fest there. you got to give it to them. They, they bamboozled me, as uh, Mirage would say. Okay. Right, fall back here. Good. Let's just speed things up and allow everyone to run down and get those goddamn chevrons. So we deployed 5,381. We lost about 600. But they deployed 2,650. They weren't expecting a united crusading force in the north. The Abbasid Caliphate. They thought that they were only facing the boy soldiers of bloody Antioch. I kind of want to get Antioch as a city. I'd kind of wish if I could sort of pay for it, to be perfectly honest, or try and allow them to secede us, to secede it to us for a payment or a time, because it, even though Acre is my capital for now, I probably should change it to Jerusalem, actually, if I can do that. Um, we don't have the regional capital there because it's uh, in the in the actual settle in the actual region even though Ak is our capital cool let's run them down a decisive victory at that good 679 to be exact let's have a look at how our forces did catapults only did five that's five fine cavalry 99 216, 153. The swordsman did well. 120, 116, 54. How did our spearmen do? Comparing to the axemen. 82, 60, 53. 95, 32, 75. Huh. I wonder if you could sort of do a cost analysis of the two. For the spearmen and the axemen. I thought they were like far superior. But they're not crazy too much of a difference. So, looking at the Zengid. Yeah, most of their forces... What did well for them were their heavier cavalry, which is understandable. 104, 103 for the heavy melee cavalry, and then the archers, 33, 20. Swordsmen, heavier spearmen did okay under the circumstances. But that army should have uh, performed way better, in my opinion. That was a bit crazy. They kept on pulling back out to reform my line three times. They pushed themselves to the border of the map. They couldn't make a decision. Because they knew they were going to get enveloped. They just kept on moving. They should have tried to corner camp or, or at least something. But that sort of craziness of not a strong long front line. Allowing skirmishes and cavalry to sort of break rank and move around. Made it quite... Well, it pushed me to be quite reactionary. And I nearly got caught in a number of, number of phases. Lucky I got a good couple of volleys off. If there was like a nice strong uh, cavalry charge against... My archers, we probably would have been in a world of pain, but we flicked some nice volleys off quite quickly. Okay, guys, welcome to the campaign map. Decisive victory, and uh, let's straight up kill the captives. I don't think we need the replenishment there. Oh, some of them fled to the city there. I don't particularly want to take it myself, but I can't afford that army to run away. I guess we sort of push for it. It's going to draw that garrison out, isn't it? Oh, no matter. Let's go for it here now. Because I want to—I don't actually want to take this just yet. I want to get rid of the Sultanate of Rum. Oh, there's a little bit of the RNG there escaping. Let's kill that. So we've smashed the garrison inside. 
for anyone who wants it. We can't move out there. That's all right. Okay, cool beans. Cool, 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 cool beans. Okay, guys, just going through the end turn phase now. And then we'll start making preparations for the siege against the Seljuks. Oh, Venice even wants to give me a payment to go to war with them. Yeah, I'm more than happy to do that after the next turn when it's on my turn. But we might have to push against the angered... Oh, okay. Um, Zengids. But it looks like... Antioch is already purging forces in Aleppo. That's good. They're pushing forces all the way to Mosul. Ah, the pretenders in the north. I'm happy to receive peace for a payment because I'm going to open up some more wars in a moment. Sure, 2,000 is, is fine. Unfortunately, guys, it is time to end the video here. Thank you very much for watching. Like and subscribe if you haven't already. Let me know in the comment section down below your feedback for the series. And if you would like to see more, that's the best way to ensure more content. Leave a dislike if you're not enjoying the series. Check out my social media links if you want to stay connected with me. Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, all in the description below. Highly recommend Twitter. Every single time I post a video, a tweet goes out. It's much more reliable than the YouTube sub box. These days, to get all the notifications for the channel, you have to click the bell, of course, to join the notification squad. I do enjoy reading those comments. Patreon and merchandise link in the description below, along with the Steam group. Come and join the community on Steam. And on that note, unfortunately, I have to end the video here. Thank you very much for watching once again. Make sure to take care of yourselves. Go out and have a fantastic rest of your day. My name is Ben Simsy. Goodbye.